Hey guys, this is Jeff from Smart Home Makers and today in this video, I've got two dashboards for you. We'll be looking at a dashboard for a tablet and a dashboard for a smartphone. These dashboards are created in Home Assistant, my smart home platform of choice. To create these dashboards, you don't need any coding or any prior knowledge. You just need to follow through this video. We're gonna go through step by step and actually how to build this from scratch. First, we're gonna go with the tablet and then afterwards with the smartphone. For your convenience, I've actually added screenshots and the entire code on my blog and to find it if you just open up another tab in google and just put in leonardo smart home makers blog you should find it and the first article and it should be up and running and now let's roll the intro now let's have a look at the dashboard on the tablet so you've got a better understanding of how this is this works and how this is all spaced out what I would recommend for you is get your own tablet or your own device, whatever you want to use, and you need to look at it from the perspective of the device, not just look at it from the desktop that you're using to build the device. So you either use a simulator or you actually have the real device, which I've, I prefer to have the real device. So then you can think of how useful is this going to be for someone. And imagine this may be in a kitchen or a zone that a lot of people will go and use. Can you? Uh, understand it well hopefully but what about other people right it's not just about the people that design the dashboard we design the dashboard for other people in our family or guests to interact with so let's look at this right so weather we can click on the weather and we can see some information for example temperature air pressure uh, whatever so that's fine we have a front door camera which we can expand on by clicking on this and this will pop up the uh, display and we can close it down again we have lights that we can turn on from here, for example, porch light, downstairs blue. We can see the status of the front door from it's closed. We can arm our alarm panel by clicking on that door, uh, that bell thing. We have our uh, scenes, so our uh, leaving home scene, our ignite scene and lights that we can trigger in the uh, kitchen. We have a thermostat that we can, for example, uh, go up and go down. On the right hand side over here we have the garage door that we can click on, the garden light that we can turn on and off, two more CCTV cameras and then some text to speech where we can actually send a message and we can say for example uh, hello and we can, we can send that uh, as a broadcasting message. You can see we can also change the volume of that message. Let's look at the upper part. So by switching this over we can see a more detailed view of the alarm panel. Uh, we can punch in codes to disarm. We have some sensors on the bottom side. We have more cameras on the right hand side. I have the same camera twice just because uh, for privacy reason, I want to show you the cameras that are inside my home. Uh, going to the third tab, we can see over here. Now this is a little bit more of a, a media center and also uh, the left hand side is a little bit of work in progress. Um, we have four buttons for triggering uh, scripts for our Apple TV. We have our Apple TV, we have our Sonos, which we can uh, plug in music. We can select a drop down list of our playlists. We have a PlayStation 4 display, which is turned off so you can't see anything. And here we have lights, so we can uh, go on the three dots. We can change all sort of things with color. We can take a color loop effect, for example, off. We can put a random effect, and no effect. Uh, we can turn off lights, turn them back on. And like this, we can change, uh, if we can pinch this, we can change the brightness like this up and down. Lamps, uh, we can turn these off. We've got a thermostat. We've got lights around in this room, so I can turn that on. You might have seen that. Uh, there's a light just behind here, the desk, that's going up and on and off. We've got a bookcase. We've got our information over here. So going on the fourth one, in the fourth one we have our display for our weather uh, let me focus that and I'm going to put my finger in the window we have uh, temperature sensors and thermostat controls and weather outside so again this is something that there's a space still space to add more stuff in on this tab which I'm going to be looking at doing in the future now let's look at the dashboard I designed specifically for the iPhone so you can still access all dashboards in here this is how I've set it up so if I click on this button over here I can access the iPads dashboard but you can see that the same dashboard doesn't it can work and you you can start in this way but I also want to have a custom dashboard just for iPhone that's going to be enable me to really move 
very slightly. So you can see there's only one little scroll and I've got all my information I want to have immediately. So this sort of information is what I need, for example, when I'm outside of the home or I'm leaving the home, so I'll have my phone on me. I want to activate my alarm, which I can do by just tapping the alarm button. So I can just tap in and you can see it's uh, arming. On this side over here, I have motion. So is there motion in the house? Yes, there's motion. Uh, there's currently motion in the kitchen and you can see a breakdown on where there's motion. So I've, I, I think this is very useful. So you can see what's going on. Imagine you left your home and you're expecting no motion and you see this, it could get worrying. Water sensor to see if there's any water. Closed sensors in terms of doors and windows. In the middle part, I have two scenes. One is the, when I leave and one is for a good night. I have my garage door. That's the sort of way that I, I leave the home uh, through with my car. I have my thermostat that I can uh, regulate. I can turn up and turn down. I have light groups for my three zones, ground floor, first floor, second floor. And then underneath, just some little temperature glance. So you can see that in my default view, I can see nearly everything apart from the temperature glance, which isn't really that important. If I go to my second tab, which I'm going to show you, this is what I've got so far. I've got control in my living room, all the lights, the temperature and uh, all the uh, controls in this room over here. So you can see the lamp behind there and turning it on and turning it off. Now let me delve into it. Let's go into the, now let's jump into the computer and let's see how we can actually design this for your own smartphone. First thing we need to do, we need to create users. The reason why we need to create users is because we're going to use them to filter out views in the dashboard. And I'm gonna explain more about that going forward. That means that certain devices can have access to certain dashboards. To create users, just go to your configuration tab Scroll down and click on people. Now, this is the list of the current users that I have. So I have a, an admin user, my user, my wife's user, and an iPad user. So if you were to add a user or a person, just click add person. You would put a name in, you can give it a picture. And then you would tick this on and you would basically uh, give it a login. So you give it a, a name, a username and a password. And you can pick if you want to use it as an admin or, or not. I would suggest not for these devices. And then once you have it installed on that device, you can actually pick its own device and use that as a device tracker for different purposes. Now let's go about creating a dashboard. So click on configuration, scroll to Lovelace dashboards, click on it. Here we've got the view of the current dashboards. Click on add dashboard. I'm going to call this YouTube iPad. In here we can use icons. So icons come from the material design icons website. So if you open up another tab, here you can see the material design icon. So for example, if you want to search uh, for a tablet, by searching tablet, you can find different options. So you have tablet like this, uh, tablet cell phone, tablet dashboard. So if you wanted to use one of these, you would just click on it, copy this name, go over to your dashboard, append MDI, in colon and then paste it in and here you go so you can see the little uh, dashboard overview you can see the little dashboard here tablet you can see the little tablet view over here so we remember to select show in sidebar if you want to see it on the left hand side and admin only if this is just for an admin dashboard so that's not the case so let me create this and we've created our dashboard if I scroll up now, I have it here right on the iPhone. You can see I have YouTube iPad. Let's click on it. And we have this default view. So this is the default view of all of the um, entities and everything that you have. This is a really good starting point. And I would suggest to have maybe this for your desktop to start with. Because on the computer, it's not too bad. You can scroll easily and you can access everything. But for your mobile device or tablet, you actually need to have something a bit more structured. So go on the three dots right here, click edit dashboard, click start with an empty dashboard and click on take control. Now we have an empty canvas to work with. First thing we need to do, we, start, we need to start creating some views and also giving this a name. So I would rename this tablet, for example, click save and we have that now, that's done. Now I'm using four views. I'm using four of you. So what's, what is a view? A view is just a page of the dashboard. And you can see here the button add view. Click on add view. And here we can start adding views. So all of these are optional. 
and uh, but you know we need to fill them in anyway so what I would do is I would start naming them so let's create a home plus again I'm going to create a alarm second one is first floor plus again and here we're going to put a uh, climate and then click save now you can click this X button to go into a uh, read only mode so in this way you can start seeing it like this so let's have a look at our original uh, dashboard you can see we have uh, four tabs but this looks different right there are no names here so what do we need to do let me show you so if I look I'll show you in this example and I edit one of these you can see I'm using uh, my icons again from the MDI so let's add these in let me close this go back over here pencil to edit paste on the icon and save and now we have the icon so you can have the uh, name and the icon but the icon will stay let me close this again let me show you again with alarm so I'm going to go into iPad three dots edit and I'm looking at this one over here I'm going to edit with the pencil I'm going to pick icon MDI security now you can pick any ones from this uh, list that I showed you earlier but very important for this dashboard is to use the alarm URL because we're going to need that for a navigation purposes and we want to click panel mode for this dashboard but we will do that later so let me cancel let me go back to our working example three dots edit click on alarm pencil uh, paste this in MDI security we have alarm here is the URL which is fantastic and save now let's carry on and let's do the other two okay so we've done all four so we've got our basis to start working with let's go on three dots again edit dashboard and now you can see add card this is going to enable us to pick how we want to display the information and how do we want to interact with our smart home if I click add card you can see there are a lot of different type of templates that you can use and you can also go to the custom store home assistant community store ie hacks to get even more but let's stick with the standard one so going to be only going to be one that i'll be using from the custom store and i'll talk to you about that later so we have various options of types of uh, things that we can use the more one i'm going to be using is grid in this tutorial so just search for grid click on grid and then click save so at the moment we have a grid the grid is just uh, empty what is this grid actually doing let me actually explain this to you so grid is enabling us to keep things together so it's enabling us to say basically this card over here is connected to this which is then connected to this so all of this part over here from the weather card right down here to the uh, porch light all of this is one grid the central part is a second grid and the third part is a third grid now you could do this with one grid and I'll show you other views are done with one grid I'm just doing it with three grids because it's easier than if I wanted to swap if I wanted to move this one on the right to the center or just swap them around I could easily without completely uh, rewriting them so if you go to my website, go to Leonardo Smart Home Makers and you look at my latest blog post, you should find this article over here. And this is the article that I'm actually going to use in this video to reference, to uh, remember actually step by step what needs to be done. And it's sometimes easier maybe to watch this uh, and look at the screenshots also. So you can have them and you can compare the two. But it's important to understand actually how they're built and how this works so you can build your own. So first thing we need to do is we're going to, need to get a grid card grid card we need to have one column and then after that we start building the blocks so let's get going with it so it's three dots let's edit our grid card and let's start the first one is a weather forecast card search for weather and that in we need to untick render cards a square and we are good if i can save this now we can start seeing something happening over here let's go back on edit 
Now you can see this is not actually filling up this whole box. The reason why it's not filling up the box is because the column number that we set over here. So I've just swapped it to two and you can see this is actually expanded. So if I actually add this to not 31, but one, it's now taking up the whole space. That's how we can control how uh, these columns are split up. The second part we need to create is that CCTV camera, you remember. So we're looking for this uh, front door view. So click on the plus button over here and you can see we can search again for a different card. This time we'll be looking for the picture glance card. So it should be this one here with like an image and you have these buttons uh, underneath. These buttons will give you uh, action so you can actually tap on them to do things, for example. So I'm gonna click on this. Let's start filling stuff in. So let's click on camera entity. Let's click on front door. Let's go here and I'm gonna add in some binary sensors. So I'm gonna add in a front door sensor and I'm also gonna add in my porch light sensor. Porch light, uh, sorry, light. So we'll be able to turn on the light from outside and we also know if it's closed or not. We can see we've got the closed symbol. So if it was open, we would have a different symbol. Now switch this to live if you actually want the whole dashboard to be live and to, to be interactive. Uh, I, in my tablet, I actually have it live, but for, in this video, I'm just gonna keep it as auto so that things move uh, smoothly. By adding it into live, it will actually use more resources. You can have a, a title or not. So you could do maybe something like this. Front door. Now let's build the third part on underneath here. Let's click plus again. And now if you remember, we need to build these two lights. How do we do this? We need to create a grid. We need to add a grid basically. And you can see from here, the settings for this grid card over here, right? But I'll uh, explain this to you quite simply. So we've created, we've went on the plus button, let's search for grid, click on grid, and we are looking for two cards. So go and type two. Let's search for light this time. We're gonna click on light. Let me, let me scroll, right? So you, you can able, you're able to see this now. You can see how this nicely fit in 50% of the screen, just to give you a little bit of, it looks a bit better when you have full screen and then two, um, you know, two light buttons. Click again on the plus sign. And remember, we're clicking on this plus sign over here, not this plus sign over here, right? So you should have one, two, three, if you're following this through as like, if you're just uh, learning. And let's type light, click on light. We have the two lights, so now this is all set up perfectly. Go, you can go and replace this um, with whatever you want. Now, if your light is actually a switch, you can actually change this. Let me show you how to do that. So you can delete a card, right? So we're going back to one and I'll show you, it's a little bit of a trick. So I always, I would say, always go with um, a light if it's a light bulb, but if it's a switch and you haven't converted it, you can just use a button card. So I'm going to go and click button card and I'm using some my downstairs do is on a switch. So it's switch dot, there you go. So I haven't converted this yet. Now you can see this got this little symbol over here. I'm not too much of a fan of that symbol, but what you can do is you can just go MDI where it says icon and you can put, I don't know, something like this. And then you have this image over here. Same with uh, the first cars. If we click on one, we're going back and we are interacting with this, uh, this guy over here. We can change this to something a little bit nicer. So you can go MDI and then search for whatever you used. In my example, I'm using this little port light. Um, so if you go to the MDI website, just search for light, you should see many options over there. So you can get something like this, for example. There you go. So just click on it and copy and paste, paste here. Remember to put MDI in front, colon, and, and you have it there. Now you can also remove the um, names, if you don't like the names. 
So I don't particularly like the name over here. So let's remove it with show name and tick on it. And the name now goes away. And you, potentially you could do that with the L1 too and click on one and go over here. And you could just add a blank space and that will remove the name. Okay. Now we're done with this. Click save. Now let's carry on. Let's add in the second grid. The second grid, we have another grid card. We have a alarm panel on the top. So this is one card, two, second, second element is a grid card of three, one, two, three. And the third element is a thermostat card. So let me recap again. First card is a single element, three elements. So this will be a grid and this will be single. So anytime you want to have multiple um, on one line, multiple blocks, that would be that you would use a grid to do that. And in this example, I've used uh, three columns and over here I use two columns, just to give it a little bit of a, uh, just, you know, differentiate it a bit. So I'm going to go a little bit faster this time. So I'm going to add card, search for grid, click on grid. I always have one column because I'm, I'm building them like this. So this is my center column. My first one is a button card. And I'm going to select my home alarm. I'm going to tick underneath here. This. I'm going to uh, remove the name because I don't like the name. I've got tap action is toggle and more actions. I'm actually going to add in something over here. So what you will need to do is you will need in the more actions. We actually need the link to the uh, next part. So I sh show you here in the blog post. We've got this expression over here. So it's Lovelace dash iPad uh, slash alarm. So what I need is navigate, click on navigate, scroll down and the navigation path. So whatever you call it. So in this example, I called it tablet. And you remember the alarm view? That's the name of uh, this one over here. So that's sorted. In the home alarm panel, we need to change the tap action. So let's click on call service. Under call service, I'm calling the arm away service. Pick an entity, click pick entity, and you should only have one. I only have one, but I mean, you could have multiple. Just pick the one you want to uh, activate or deactivate. So we have it here. If you do have a code when you're disarming, you need to tick this box and put it here. I would suggest you not to have one. And you can change that in configuration.yaml. And if you need any help, just drop a comment. Let's carry on then. So plus button, we want a grid card for those three uh, scenes. Three columns, yeah, that's fine. Don't need to render it as a square. So we have two buttons and one light. So I'm just gonna go quickly, go button, plus button, <laughs> uh, button card, plus and light. And you go over here and you change it, right? You change it to whatever you are uh, going to use. So let me show you the scenes because I haven't showed you this before. Click on uh, the scene and you'll find a good night scene. And you have the uh, sleep automatically populated, which is nice. I've already set this up when I set up the scene. So if you didn't do that, you can add it here. But I would suggest you add it when you create the scene. Tap action, we need to change this to call service. And now just type in scene and you should have scenes activate, turn on. And pick entity and pick the right one, right? So you want to need the good night tab to pick the good night scene. Awesome. So that's done. You need to do the same thing for the second one, for your second scene. But the third one is just a light uh, bulb. So it's exactly the same as the other one that we've created. But part of this and um, middle part of the dashboard is the nest uh, thermostat. So click plus sign, search for thermostat, click on thermostat, pick the right thermostat, nest thermostat. And uh, if we scroll down, we should see it over here. And let's click save. Let me de zoom a bit out. So you can see there's this gap over here between these two. So if you encounter this issue, it's most probably it's because of a squared issue. So click on edit. You can see we have rendered that square uh, enabled. So if I disable it now, it's, it's all compact. So it's not really trying to create a square. 
which we don't want to square because it's a rectangle, right? And there you go. So we have saved that up now. Let's carry on and let's add in the third one. Search for grid card, select one column and disable render card as square. Let's have a look on what we need to do now. Okay, so we've got two elements over here. I guess you know that's a, a um, grid card. Got one CCTV, one CCTV, and then a, uh, a living room speaker. So I'm going to go through these quickly. And these two are very similar to this one. And the garage door is also similar. It's just a button. And this is a uh, another button because it's a shelly device. The first time is a grid. Grid, we have two columns, no squares. And we're just going to go button and then plus button and go top over here at the second section. So we are using the picture, picture element, picture entity, sorry, picture entity, which is a lot, slightly different from the glass card because it doesn't have the uh, capabilities of the button underneath. And we want another one. Click on picture entity. We're getting there now. And the last one we want to add in is the uh, living room uh, speaker. So put the plus sign. Now, if you have a lot of hacks, uh, you can use a media control, but I installed the custom mini media player. So if you click on this, uh, they will be pretty much similar. So let me show you the media control. You would just pick your media device and it would just appear at the bottom over here. Or if you use a custom media control, let me eliminate, delete, plus again, mini, uh, mini media player. Here you've got a few more options. Uh, to uh, deal with. So you can pick your uh, speaker, you can pick artwork, you can pick various other things that you can do. So let me show you my example. Let me save this. Let's go back to the iPad. Let me edit this. Just see that if I scroll down, go three button edit. Scroll down, edit, and we have uh, little, there's only like one line of code if you're using the advanced uh, method, which is this TTS platform, uh, Google underscore translate, which you'll need to add in to add this text to speech. But if you're not using custom media player, you don't need to touch any coding. One particular thing I want to actually show you is the aspect ratio. So you can set aspect ratios to make cameras square. So I'm going to show you in my example over here of the iPad one. If I go three dots, edit dashboard, uh, edit this grid card. And let me show you the camera aspect ratio. So over here, you can add an aspect ratio. So if you were to do that, you can actually then have them nice and square. If you've got two different cameras for two different brands and it might not have the same aspect ratio. So this one is an Anki camera and this one is a real in camera. I hope you're enjoying building this dashboard. I'm actually working on a course that I'm going to link down in the description below where I'm going through exactly step by step how to set this all up, but also how to use it as a kiosk. So, you know, what tablet to use when you want a mall mounted. And we're going to go through in detail on each single card and how it works and how you can use it for your own smart home. So if you're quite interested in that, I've got a special deal for you. And for the first 10 people, that are going to enroll in the course, there's 20% off. So link in the description. Anyway, let's keep going. Let's carry on with the rest of the tablet. Now that you've got a better understanding of how it actually works, I'm going to open up my example and I'm going to actually talk you through the things that are no noteworthy of difference. So this video doesn't feel too repetitive because sort of it is following the same pattern, right? Let's look at the second uh, one over here. Three dots, edit dashboard. Now this card is, this whole view is just one card. So you can see there's only one edit. Uh, you can't really see that because I'm in the way. Right, so I'm gonna remove myself from the video so you can actually see this whole thing better. We've got the edit button over here. So this is one big card. So what you need to do when you have one big card, you need to go and enable the panel mode. Tick the panel mode and then you'll be good to go. So we save that. Click on edit and let me show you how this uh, grid is uh, split up in. So we have one main grid card, 
one column and it's not a square in here we have two elements the top element and the bottom element the top element is split up with a grid card right and the first part of the grid card is the alarm panel as you can see over here the second part of this grid card this grid over here is the four camera combo and the four camera combo this is a another grid card so this is a, a another grid card of four elements so as you can see from number two we have one two three four elements these are the four elements grouped up in columns of two so if we were to change this to columns of three you would see this would be like this or you could have it in columns of four and it'll be like that right so i'm having those columns are columns of two pick what makes more sense for your device let's look at the bottom part of this grid in the bottom part of the grid we have entities um let me show you what entities so if we go plus sign these are the entities over here the entities i split them up by zone so ground floor first floor second floor there are three entities split up simply and in a grid card so the bottom part is a grid card uh three columns so i want them all all together and over here we have all of the information that we need so you can add all of your sensors just one by one so you can go over to entity and add, add it and then you know you can keep on going in this way and once that is done you can go to the second tab and do the again and the third one once that's done you can save it again if you're not too sure you've got the blog to you can reference with more screenshots of how this actually is done in detail and the code behind it which you can reference now let me show you the entertainment center part of the video so this is uh, very similar so let's go and look at the edited edit the dashboard we have three grid cards you could argue you could have these two as one grid card if you wanted to this grid card over here is pretty much straightforward. Let me edit and show you. We have one column, right? So we have one grid card with one column. We have the first part of the grid card is a uh, these four buttons, which are scripts that run and actually trigger things on my Apple TV to make, uh, you know, to turn Disney on or Netflix or whatever. You can see the grid card over here with two columns not rendered a square with four individual tabs representing these four tabs. And second part of the um, card, I have my Apple TV and I'm using the custom mini card and I'm using that for all three or four of these. And all of these are very similar. So it's just Sonos, PlayStation, and then Plex. On the right hand side, I really like this look over here. Let me show you. So uh, I have a columns, uh, this time I do have them as squared, so I like to keep it as a square, this one. So I think this looks best like this. Um, we have a, a nice grid with two columns, so this is one grid, right, with four lights, and this is the second grid. The first grid, which is these four buttons over here, represented, represented by a, a grid card, two columns, rented that square, with four separate light bulbs. And I've uh, got this nice lamp over here to actually differentiate lamps between ceiling lights. So it's sort of easier on the eye to find which one is which. That's quite useful uh, when you have this on wall mounted, for example. Let me scroll down on this part over here. This is very similar. Let me edit to show you. I have a switch, a ceiling light, a lamp, a bookcase. Uh, climate over here with my thermostat and underneath here is a little bit more let me show you this part underneath let's go to the fourth tab and, and here we have a glance card uh, with uh, binary sensors uh, over here so these three sensors are these ones over here we have a uh, light closed and uh, motion detected or not these three over here are represented by the fan part of the uh, card these are my IMAC active uh, camera in use or microphone in use. So we have all this information over here. In the last tab, we have one single card again. So this is set in panel mode of one grid card. This took me a while to um, get the way I wanted. I'm not too convinced this is exactly what I uh, want to achieve. 
I have three columns. I have a one column, a second column, and a third column. And these three columns, so that's the first one is weather. Second one is a grid card with four elements representing four sensors. So if I click plus and I search for sensor, you can see you can select sensor and then you will just add in whatever you needed. So let me show you, give you an example sensor and you can change the graph type to put a line or to none uh, to represent the uh, trend of that sensor. The third part, you will see thermostats, four thermostats in a grid card in two columns set up like this. And this should give you something, a, a look uh, that doesn't look too bad on the iPad. Now let me show you my iPhone dashboard. So this is going to be a lot simpler for two reasons. First reason is we want to fit everything in a one swipe of the screen. So we don't want to really have too many swipes up and down. And I also don't want to have too many cameras at the moment necessarily, because that will make it slower to respond and slower to open. Now I will create a separate tab with dashboard uh, cameras in them in the future. So at the moment my home uh, tab has a, an alarm so I can activate the alarm. I can also do a hard tap for example like this and I could put a code in to disarm the alarm. I have a general uh, sensor for motion so is there motion in the home? This could be useful for for example when I'm outside the home. Is there, Have I got any water leaks? Uh, have I got any open doors? For example external doors. Have I got any open windows? And this is for uh, leaving the home scene and a uh, good night scene. I have my garage door over here. I have my thermostat. And here are three light groups, one for each zone of my home where I can turn lights on and off and I can control them around here. And then I have some, just a, a glance card with some temperature sensors at the bottom here. On my first floor, that this is very similar to the one in the iPad. I'm using the same controls over here. It's pretty much uh, similar. I'll actually show you how you can replicate uh, dashboards between, uh, well, let's say I can replicate cards between one dashboard and another. Now let's build a dashboard for a smartphone. So I've got Home Assistant open and up and running and you can see this is the one I have and I showed you previously with my smartphone. So let's go to the basics and let's go to configuration. Let's scroll right down and click on configuration. Click on Lovelace dashboard. Click Add Dashboard, give your dashboard a title, a, an icon. So for example, you could use the NDI library and you can say phone or uh, other things, maybe more of a modern phone. Once you've done that, you should have something like this. My one is set up with NDI cell phone and I have show in sidebar enabled. Now you should see over here the actual dashboard that you just created. So click on it and you will see uh, this dashboard over here. So to create this, I'll show you how you do this. Go on three dots, edit dashboard. I'm going to edit the dashboard and I'm going to show you. So first thing we need to do is create a grid card. So let me actually create one from scratch myself so I could become follow through together. So this is the one I'm trying now, just following through. I'm creating one called smartphone. Uh, so go on the three dots, edit dashboard. Click on start with an empty dashboard and click take control. Now we're going to start with a nice clean um, canvas. We can give this a name over here so we can give our lovely UI a nice name. So we can call it smartphone. Click on save. Now we have a, uh, we have the plus button to create a view. This view I'm going to use is the home view. And I can just go and add in an MDI uh, icon. And we're going to click save and we have the nice uh, view over here. Now let's click on add card. Search for grid card. Click on grid card. We want a grid card with one column. We do not want it rendered as square. And in here we can start adding things. Now I would suggest if you haven't done this already to pull up the blog post on my blog. So if you just Google Leonardo Smart Home Makers and you should find it over here. And if you pull it up, you can see all the screenshots and actual uh, detailed descriptions of how to create this yourself. The first part of the panel is a grid card again with one uh, card for alarms and a four cards over here for 
uh, our buttons and sensors. So search for grid card again, click on grid card. In the column section, we're going to select two columns. Let's add a button. So, uh, search for button, click on button card. And I'm using my alarm panel, click on it. You scroll down, you should see this uh, symbol over here. I'm removing the show name, so I don't want the name of, of it underneath. So we've got that as our first step. Uh, click the plus button to add in a, a new card. Now we can add in a grid card. Click on grid and we want to have two columns. And in here we want four elements. Okay, so we want four elements. So we're going to go for four buttons. So I'm just going to add them rapidly. One, two, click the plus sign again and again for the fourth time let's have a look at how that actually looks now we can see we have our first panel the alarm panel we have four um, button cards so this is starting to look like this example over here now if you replace these with your own uh, entities or whatever you want to display you'll be able to do that so scrolling up you can replace your entity with another entity of what you want to represent. And remember that you can always use MDI icon to change the icon so it looks exactly as you want it to look. And that's really going to be important so you can actually, at a quick glance, see the difference. Potentially, you don't even need uh, labels anymore. Now let's carry on. We want to add a third element. So we want to add an element underneath these this block over here, so we're going to add a block over here. To do that, click the plus sign, but this time the top upper um, plus. And we're going to add a couple more buttons. So we got to go button again, and then plus again, and we got to go button. And in here, we are able to use our scenes. So let me replace this light with a scene. Good night, scene. Scroll down, change tap action to call service, go on service and pick scene, search for scene, click activate, pick the entity, uh, good night scene, and you can see that one is done. You can do the same thing for the next one to actually sort out this button underneath here. Now let's scroll back up. So we've got two more elements to add for this dashboard. Uh, we have these two elements over here and then we've got this other block of data underneath here so let's go and click back in home assistant click plus sign we've got our fifth element so this element is a button card for our garage door so i just replace this with cover dot garage door and the click plus sign again the sixth element is a uh, thermostat card click on this and we should have that nicely displayed now this uh, we can save this and you can see this is starting taking a shape this second part is a another uh, grid and the grid uh, is composed of uh, three columns and then underneath we have a simple glance card so you can see the uh, lights here uh, the, these are three separate cards for triggering lights in different separate zones and the one underneath is a glance card so this glance card has three elements and you can see they match up quite nicely and so i would suggest you go and check out the code in case you have any doubts there, there's there's a lot to go through if you're able to check out the code but i think you understand the idea behind the dashboard and what you would do is you would just simply uh, build something out that uh, is able to fill up your screen and uh, not much more than that. You don't want too many scrolls. And then again, you can continue, for example, by uh, adding more stuff. And let me show you how you can actually copy a, um, a view, a card from one dashboard to another. So let's go, for example, to my YouTube iPad. And I'm gonna go to this tab over here. 
sorry, let's go to iPad. Let's go to this tab. Let's click on the three dots, edit. So let's pick the one that we want to um, move. So you could just move it, uh, but then you will lose it from where it is. So you just duplicate card, just save. And you'll have two versions of the card now. And what you'll do is click on the three dots again, click on move to view. On the drop down list, find the dashboard that you want to move it to. So I want to move it to smartphone, I want to move to home, fine. And then it would move. And then you see this one uh, hasn't uh, been changed because it's gone. So you can close this down, you can go to your smartphone, for example, and you can see you have now moved it. And then you can just uh, edit it as you would do normally with your three dots. And you can just manipulate that as you wish. So I know this was a very long video and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this video, then you can press that like button. That will help me a lot so I can actually understand if you want me to make more dashboarding videos, maybe more, more sophisticated media control or anything you want me to do, just leave a comment down in the description below. I'm really excited to announce that I am launching a new membership and the new membership will have this dashboarding course included in the bundle. So you can find all those details in the page down below. To actually enroll and to learn more about dashboarding, you can find the link in the description. And the first 10 people that I enroll will get a special 20% coupon code just for the YouTube subscribers. In that course specifically, I'll be going through this in more detail. We'll be looking at all of the cards specifically. We'll look at some custom cards. And also at the end, we're gonna build a nice kiosk dashboard. I've got an Amazon Fire tablet, but you can pick any tablet and we can actually have it wall mounted and have it all up and running. So we can really have a really cool experience with our smart homes and we can interact with it and display information. So I'm very excited and I hope you'll check it out. Anyway, I'm gonna leave you with a cool playlist here that you can go and watch. As always, subscribe to the channel if you haven't and just stay safe and I'll see you in the next video.